You are listening to Audio Mag, Magazines Canada's podcast. I'm Kylie Pohl, Manager of Member Services and Benefits at Magazines Canada, and I'm happy to share with you this special episode of Audio Mag, where Magazines Canada responds to your COVID-19 concerns. We understand that this pandemic has brought unprecedented disruptions to the economy and daily life, and we hope to answer some of your pressing needs with four short interviews with Magazines Canada staff. Our producer, Michael Brown, conducted the interviews, and we are recording remotely, so please forgive any disruptions in audio quality. As this is an evolving situation, Magazines Canada will continue to update you as best that we can through our social media channels, e-newsletters, and member bulletins. First up, we spoke with Melanie Rutledge, Executive Director of Magazines Canada, about the funding and support packages that the federal government is currently offering. So I'm here with Melanie Rutledge, Executive Director of Magazines Canada. Thanks for joining me, Melanie. Thanks for having me, Michael. So as of this recording, which is on April 8th, 2020, what are some government initiatives that magazines should be aware of? Because, you know, things are kind of changing day to day and and relatively quickly. Well, firstly, for magazines that receive support via the aid to publishers component of the Canada Periodical Fund, um, it's important for our members to know that the 2020 aid to publisher payments are being expedited and payments will be made to publishers by the end of April or early May 2020. Well, the most up-to-date information I have from the Department of Canadian Heritage, um, this is new information as of late last week, um, is that they hope to have all aid to publisher payments completed uh, uh, and out the door by the middle of May 2020. Secondly, Magazines Canada is working with the three provincial magazine associations in BC, Alberta and Quebec to leverage two other types of support for magazines from the federal government. The first of these uh, supports is financial support for magazine publishers who currently are not eligible for support from the aid to publishers component of the Canada Periodical Fund. And we know that in Canada, there are many, many magazine publishers who are currently publishing who do not receive support uh, from from the aid to publishers component. Um, Magazines Canada has many members who are in this situation, uh, and uh, so do the uh, provincial associations in British Columbia and Alberta. So that's the first uh, thing we're working on uh, with um, the government. Secondly, we are working for... uh, additional support for publishers who receive aid to publisher support. This would be in addition to the expedited 2020 ATP payments that are already underway. And we expect to hear more about this shortly. Thirdly, for those magazines who receive core, um, which is really operating support from the Canada Council for the Arts and who are classified as core funded organizations, The Council is paying these publishers an advance of 35% of their 2020-21 core grant as of May 4th, 2020. Fourthly, Magazines Canada is engaging with Canada Post to request that payment terms for publications mail clients be extended from the current 15-day term to a 90-plus day term, which would help publishers with their cash flows. And we will have more news to share with our members on this file shortly. And finally, the federal government is investing $30 million in a national advertising campaign for its COVID-19 messaging. Cassette is the agency of record. We are working to ensure not only that the majority of the $30 million spend goes to Canadian media outlets and not offshore outlets, and that Canadian magazines are a significant part of the advertising mix. Well, that sounds terrific. Those are all really great, uh, you know, things that I, I guess you're working on with the government and that are, that are, you know, either soon to be available or already available. Um, so do we have any sense of how this will impact future funding? Well, Based on our conversations with federal government officials and based on the support announced so far, 
what the federal government is doing is expediting or speeding up support that was already on the books for this year. This is what they are doing with the aid to publisher payments. It's your 2020 payment that you would have received in November of this year, say, that's now coming to you much earlier in May. And the Canada Council is doing the same thing by advancing 35% of core grants that would have come to magazines later in the year. Now, in terms of the impact this might have on future funding, right now I don't see it having any kind of impact in the sense that I believe future funding for the Canadian magazine sector is intact and preserved. Now, of course, our next big government relations push will be to increase the budget of the aid to publishers component of the CPF because we know it is far from adequate and that there are many, many meritorious magazines that are currently ineligible to receive support from the program, and we want to change that. Perfect. Well, that's that's great. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So for magazines that are receiving project funding, can we expect to see leniency from funders for the activities impacted by COVID-19? Yes, I would encourage magazines to reach out to funding institutions now and speak directly with your program officer to find out what their approach is going to be. So this applies to magazines that receive project funding from the business innovation component of the Canada Periodical Fund at the Department of Canadian Heritage, for example. It applies to magazines that receive project support from the Canada Council for the Arts, as well as in Ontario via the Ontario Arts Council or Ontario Creates. Magazines in other provinces and territories where funding is available should definitely reach out to their respective provincial funding institutions. And if you're in BC or Alberta, definitely reach out to Sylvia Skeen at the Magazine Association of BC or to Suzanne Trudell at the Alberta Magazine Publishers Association. And also, um, by all means, please reach out to me if you would like more information about this or if you would like to find out who in particular to speak with at these various institutions, you can reach me directly at 613-816-0823 uh, or via email at mrutledge at magazinescanada.ca. We're also going to be holding weekly town halls for members every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, where you can join the meeting online and ask me your questions. Um, so just to conclude this part, I, I can say that every single conversation I have had to date with a funding institution has been extremely positive. They understand what the sector is living through right now, and they are very willing to help listen and do what they need to do to help magazines through. That's that's awesome. Do you feel from the conversations that you've been having that um, magazines are um, being hit harder than, you know, other industries uh, about the same? Or do you think that there's kind of, you know, any um, positive opportunities or good news stories coming out of this? I think that all sectors of the Canadian economy are being hit incredibly hard by this. So it's, um, it's challenging and, and, and maybe from a political point of view, not the best perspective to be taking to going out there and saying, you know, we were hit worse than anybody else, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's the first thing I would say is that everybody, every sector of the economy um, is suffering. Um, the second thing I would say about magazines in particular is that uh, – you're 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 quite right um, to your point. Um, they were they were hit hard at the beginning of this, and they were hit fast, notably in advertising revenues, which simply fell off a cliff um, because advertisers shut their doors uh, and um, the ads stopped stopped coming in. So we know that um, that uh, advertising revenues uh, were hit very hard very early. But as this continues, um, we also know that magazines are going to um, have downward impacts um, in other revenue channels that they rely on. Uh, certainly, certainly, newsstand sales um, uh, are drying, are you know, non-existent right now because retailers have understandably and legitimately and legitimately closed their doors. Um, but the more this continues, uh, and we see consumers tightening up their spending, um, subscription revenue for magazines could be in peril as well. 
Um, so that's why we're working so hard um, with the federal government um, and with provincial governments as well to um, just ensure that um, the magazine sector has all the supports it can get. And that's why we were really, really thrilled. Um, uh, you know, and this is this is based on a, a, a very, you know, strong relationship we have with Canadian Heritage, but we were really thrilled to see those expedited aid to publisher payments announced so quickly. Um, it's worth saying that the magazine sector um, was one of the first sectors uh, to actually um, receive a bona fide announcement of support from the federal government. So I, I think that's pretty incredible under the circumstances. Um, and just to, answer, just to answer the last part of your question about innovation, um, I, I certainly, and I, again, I, I think this applies to all sectors of the economy. You know, um, you talk about business continuity planning and innovation, um, you know, and I know that Evan Dixon, uh, our director of business development, is going to speak more about this later. But, um, you know, we're, we're finding all kinds of innovative and creative ways to work remotely um, on our team, to stay connected, to um, think outside the box to do innovative things. I think this episode of Audio, Audio Mag is a terrific example of that. So if there is a silver lining, if I can go so far as to say that under these circumstances, um, I, I would say, uh, and for the sector as well, I would say that people are really digging deep into their own, into their own adaptive capacities, their innovative capacities, their creativity, and finding ways to just get it done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is something to be said about, um, you know, uh, difficult times and the way that people can pull through or, or do new and incredible things. So that's great. And it's great that there's so many um, kind of not necessarily opportunities, but that these initiatives are already being made available and so quickly, as you mentioned. Um, so yeah. do you have any advice for folks making appeals for funding at this time? I know you'd already mentioned a couple people specifically to be reached out to or, um, you know, how to directly contact yourself. Is there anything else to add there? My advice is really simple. I would advise people to go straight to the source and speak with your program officer directly. And I would advise people to be forthright and honest about your situation. Um, if you're not sure who your program officer is um, or, um, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd like to speak to somebody else within the funding institution, I would definitely encourage folks to reach out to Magazines Canada. Um, we can put you in touch with uh, the right person. Terrific. So on a different note, what's something that you're doing to stay positive during this time? <laughs> this is a great question. <laughs> I'm working from home, uh, like so many other Canadians. Uh, I'm here in Russell, Ontario, which is a small community about 30 minutes southeast of Ottawa. And I'm here with my two sons, who are 10 and 8, and they're very busy this week with assigned schoolwork from their teachers. Um, my partner is an essential service worker, so he's off-site, so to speak, all day long. So, like all of us, my cup truly runneth over these days. Yes. I, um, I am staying positive by wrapping myself and my family in a solid routine. And the clock is my dance partner in this because it really is a dance with time uh, to make a routine work. And finally, um, I'm staying very connected with the amazing Magazines Canada team with our members colleagues and friends who toil day in and out in the magazine industry in Canada to publish trusted Canadian content that readers across the country value incredibly. Now, more than ever, Canadians need to trust what they read, and Canadian magazines have always delivered that content. And what a note to end it on. Well, thank you so much, Melanie, for joining me today. And uh, yeah, we will, uh, I'm sure, be speaking more again soon about this. It's been so great to work with you on this, Michael. Stay safe and stay well. Next up, Brianne D'Angelo, Director of Communications and Public Engagement, gave us some advice about the different communication strategies that your magazine can use during this time. Thanks for joining us, Brianne. Thanks, Michael. Um, so what are some important considerations when planning a response to COVID-19? Um, I think overall, magazines will want to retain their stakeholders' trust. 
during this pandemic. Um, and depending on your magazine, your stakeholders might encompass like your readers, advertisers, sponsors, donors, <laughs> freelancers, staff. Um, so a good place to start with the communication strategy could be based on three things, I think. A willingness to be transparent, to be helpful, and to be dynamic or flexible. Um, so when planning your response, you could consider like how your business is changing and then be transparent with your stakeholders about how you'll continue to connect with them and serve them. Um, you'll also be thinking about your offering, your product services, and then how can you be flexible and willing to adapt to meet the needs of your stakeholders at this time? Um, you're probably also going to think about additional questions that you might receive, and then how can you provide customer service to best handle them and be helpful? Yeah. Okay. So um, do you think that it's important to tailor your message to different audiences, i.e. subscribers versus advertisers? Yes, I would, I would think so. Um, for your readers and subscribers, for example, uh, you are probably thinking about how they're going to be reading your content or receiving their magazines. So like if you publish a B2B magazine, for example, and most of your subscribers have their copies sent to their work, um, maybe you're going to be offering an option to deliver it to their home. Um, maybe a magazine will decide to lower their subscription prices or their paywall. Uh, maybe they'll decide to focus more on their digital platform to provide like up to the minute content to readers on their website and their social media. And then for your advertisers, you're probably thinking about how to reassure them about their marketing spend with your magazine at this time. Um, the information or help that they might need to make a purchasing decision or retain a purchasing decision. So these types of con considerations will ultimately affect the message that you communicate to your audiences and the way that you deliver it. Um, maybe it's by like picking up the phone, maybe it's by email or a webinar or a live video or a dedicated space on your website for COVID-19 news. Um, I think overall, magazines are considering how to adapt their offerings and content to help their audiences. Um, some of your stakeholders will have been heavily impacted by the pandemic as well, like individuals and business. So you wanna consider that when crafting your communications. Absolutely. So is it important that management take the time to respond to staff and contractors separately from their regular messaging? Um, yes, I would agree about that as well. Like, if you've come to a COVID-19 plan as a team, you want your team to all stay in the loop about that plan and how it's working or adapting. Um, and with potentially more team members working remotely, staying in regular communication is really important. Um, for example, if you know that a key component of your comm strategy is to focus on customer service, your team members will want to know why this is important and how prioritize incoming emails or phone calls. Um, magazine editors are also all probably reviewing their upcoming stories and issue plans in light of the pandemic. And uh, you'll want to stay in touch with like freelancers and writers quite closely as the situation adapts. Um, actually, Broadview magazine editor and publisher Jocelyn Bell recently wrote a really great editor's letter about the editor's letter, sorry, about the challenges of adapting editorial plans at this time and how she's managing those decisions with her team day to day. So it really is an ongoing conversation. What were some of the things that she mentioned in that article? If you um, know off the top of your it, head. Yeah, well, it, it was interesting because it, it really resonated with me as well, even though I, I work for a publisher's association, not a magazine. Um, but she talked about viewing all of the upcoming content in a COVID-19 lens. And it's so true, like you, you're thinking about how is this, gonna, this piece going to land? Is this still appropriate? Do we need to adjust? And so you really are making decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. And so it was just nice to see somebody lay that out and, and talk about what they're going through very openly. Um, 
And I, I think the piece has really resonated with a lot of other editors as well. because They're all dealing with the same issues. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's not like there's anybody who's excluded from this. Um, so no. what type of tone should these responses have? Mm. Um, okay, yeah. So if you're, if you're focusing on like retaining your audience's trust, your tone is definitely going to be informed by that focus on like building, maintaining relationships and connection. So you might want to craft your messaging with, with that top of mind, um, helping others. Um, I think transparency is really important too, because you want to let your readers, your advertisers and other stakeholders know that you're going to be there for them and, and how. Um, and I think you can be vulnerable too, like that editor's letter that I mentioned. You can explain how your business is impacted and what your plans are to manage the challenges and keep everybody safe. Um, you, Especially if you've had to make significant changes to your offerings, like if you hold events, um, you can be open about why and what these changes mean for your magazine. So I think, again, the tone should be helpful. You want to be transparent and you want to be flexible. Um, is there like such a thing as kind of like an, an overshare? Like, you know, before the COVID-19 pandemic, we heard a lot about the need for transparency with your audience, especially with the rise in disinformation. But, you know, is there such a thing as either too many communications or oversharing in terms of what your plans may or may not be? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because like the situation is evolving and changing from day to day. So on the one hand, it really is a time for like breaking news and, and sharing information with your stakeholders. Um, people might even be finding that their audience is c coming directly to them with questions and like asking for information. Um, that being said, like breaking news needs to contain essential news. So you do want to try to get the balance right between sending out too much and too little. Uh, to do that, you can make sure that your news is as current as possible and that it contains essential information that affects your audience. Um, you could also adapt your communication so that your audience can easily digest information. Um, so maybe instead of sending out something every day, you create like a dedicated space on your website so that people can find all the information that they need related to COVID-19. And then you can include a link to that in your outgoing communications. Or some people are hosting like weekly live videos or sending a digest newsletter with a summary of the news. So you're not overwhelming people. Absolutely. All right. So um, what's something that you're doing to stay positive during this time? Um, I'm uh, trying to get some exercise while I'm working from home and that is helping. And, um, I'm cuddling my cat a lot more than usual. <laughs> nice. Nice. So yeah, still finding a way to at least like, um, get outside for a walk, pro properly socially distanced and such. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you. Next, we have Chris Chambers, Manager Retail Accounts, talk us through how to adjust your distribution plan to best bounce back when stores reopen. Thanks for joining me, Chris. Hello. Hi, Michael. Um, so with most stores closed, what's something the magazines can do to move quickly when stores are actually open again? Well, uh, distribution-wise, um, having your uh, new issue at... Uh, at your distributor's warehouse is probably uh, as much as, as, as anyone can do. Um, we, um, our warehouse is open and, and receiving magazines. We're just not shipping them. And so, um, so, so yeah, if you have an issue printed and, uh, and, and you're good to go, um, then, you know, I would, I would alert the distributor and say, we're going to send uh, copies. Um, might be polite to ask how many we should send uh, at this point, just because um, distribution is strange once once the magazines get to the warehouse. Um, in that, basically, we've been holding ours for 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 three and a half weeks now and uh, not shipping to to uh, stores uh, yet. 
However, we have we have plans to uh, we have we have plans to do some shipping uh, late, later this month and and start getting the backload to the to the open stores. Good, good. So I guess you kind of partially answered my next question. Should people still be sending their magazines to their distributor? Yeah, uh, I mean it's a tough one, and I and I do get I uh, receive uh, emails regularly from our publishers asking exactly that. Um, and it has a lot to do with timing. It has a lot to do with um, whether or not uh, you basically have have an issue uh, uh, good to go, and you know, at the printer or how far along uh, you are, and how soon, uh, how quickly following uh, you, 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 how, how quick you and quickly uh, you intend to follow that up with another issue. Because the the at this point. Uh, we're good to hold one issue at, at our warehouses, but I'm I'm reluctant to, uh, to 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 be holding more than one issue of all but our most frequent magazines, and um, and that's where it gets tricky. And so um, we have had some of our um, monthly publishers uh, contact me and and tell me that uh, they're going to uh, skip an issue. Um, Others are going to uh, push push the next issue back until uh, until we we see um, how far uh, the current issue makes it through the system and uh, when the customers basically come back to the stores. But uh, but it's tricky. So it's it's it, it, each publisher will have will 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 make up their own plan, um, it, and it'll be largely dependent on timing of the issue, how far along the current issue is. And how and how this uh, how how this how the world unfolds in in the in, in the next weeks and months. Yeah, how everything plays out, right? Yeah. So, uh, what are distributors doing right now? Um, we're trying to customize uh, distribution, and um, in in Magazines Canada case, we're we're going to uh, put together an order for about a quarter of our stores. Uh, our accounts uh, remain open. It's mostly the big, um, the big magazine stores, the big magazine convenience stores that remain open that uh, are, are are there selling uh, what they always have sold, um, you know, um, cigarettes and lottery tickets and uh, pop and chips and yeah. magazines. Um, so it's <laughs> it's those uh, th- those stores that remain open. The indie bookstores, uh, which are which are a large uh, portion of of the magazines Canada accounts, are mostly closed or yeah, certainly closed to the browsing public, which uh, which which doesn't help magazine sales really. No, I can't imagine that that would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I have talked to a few uh, a few of the uh, bookstores that are remaining open. Type in in, in Toronto, type on Queen Street. And just uh, ask anecdotally if he's getting his. So they're they're doing uh, special orders essentially, and you can come and pick them up by by the out, just outside the front of the store, or they'll deliver them to you if you're within a reasonable distance. And I just uh, was I don't know why, but I just uh, asked you know anecdotally if he's if he if anyone was calling for magazines and uh, well it wasn't it wasn't a very positive response on that front. But people don't really think necessarily of uh, of magazines. And also with with the the shoppers and the uh, London Drugs and the Law of Laws, the supermarkets re- um, remaining open, the WalMarts, mm-hmm. they, they 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 are coming across magazines there. It's just uh, for Magazines Canada publishers, it's not usually Magazines Canada <laughs> magazines. I mean, we're 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 so sort of smaller and nichey as far as the this title that we distribute goes go. That we're really hurt by the indies and by the by the chapters and indigo stores being closed. So, okay, you mentioned you know maybe in terms of um, magazines Canada as a distributor, um, but then yeah, in terms of um, like from the convenience stores or the blah blahs, like you know, um, are magazines selling well with people isolated at at home? Um, it's interesting. I just I've just I've been reading um, an article and. Um, in in the early in in March, uh, sales were actually up. In the if if you can uh, if you can recall, sort of what happened around uh, uh, our neck of the woods was it felt like the middle of March came and everyone went to Loblaws and bought toilet paper and 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 many other things. And the the American uh, the big American publishers are saying they saw, they saw a boost in magazine sales when when that hoarding uh, hoarding phase of shopping was going on in mm-hmm. in late March. 
but now, um, of course, uh, the foot traffic has been limited uh, in, in many ways, and, and certainly um, all the stores that I've been uh, visiting have, have limit the number of, of customers in the store. So, um, I mean, the magazines are still there. There's still uh, there. There are new magazines on 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 those on those racks. I just think that uh, there are fewer customers uh, at this at this point for them. So I'm 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 imagining that it's going to everyone's going to take a hit right across the board in in the in the spring months here mm-hmm. as far as newsstand sales go. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. But I mean, I do think that people are thinking of magazines during this time. I know for me, like, you know, an issue one of my magazines like showed up and I was like, Oh, great. That's so exciting. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's so nice to have this during this this time, right? But I guess maybe in oh, terms yeah. of newsstand sales, yes, people are probably a little more focused on get in get out. So subscriptions are, uh, are, are up. And that's certainly uh, 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 uh another way to go and, 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 and a bright side, uh, as far as, uh, as far as our magazine publishers go, mm-hmm. um, get one delivered right to your door, which is, uh, <laughs> kind of what, what they're asking us to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what's something that you're doing to stay positive during this time? Yeah. Uh, well, um, you know, ha- having, having regular, uh, conversations with, uh, with my publishers, um, and, and, you know, making a plan and, uh, um, you know, um, looking for, looking for light at the, uh, at the end of the tunnel and hoping, hoping that it'll, uh, come sooner rather than later. Um, and, uh, really enjoying reading with my daughter. We've gotten in this great habit of, uh, of, of, uh, of reading, uh, re- re- reading, uh, reading a book together, uh, every night. We get the cheese and the apple, uh, snack tray out and, uh, and, and sit down and, uh, and read to each other. We go back and forth, chapter by chapter. That's been uh, that's been holding uh, holding our household and me together. I'd say. Oh, that's great. That's that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a, a you're you're reading a book, not a genuine Canadian magazine. <laughs> no, uh, we're reading uh, we're we're reading some uh, some some Rebecca Stead is what we're uh, what we're on right now. Cool. When you reach me. <laughs> oh, great. That's great. Um, well, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us and for for sharing, you know, kind of what's going on in the distribution side of things. And um, it's nice to hear that subscription numbers are are up, you know, even if obviously newsstand is down because of a lack of being able to access most newsstands. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's interesting. And, and uh, um, it's it's really uh you know, all of the chapters are, have, have been closed now for a few weeks. There's, there, it feels like they're going to be closed for at least a few more weeks uh, in our country, um, and and m- most of the indie bookstores um, as well, which are, and those are uh, for for Magazines Canada distribution titles for the most part. Those those are those are huge, uh, huge, huge, huge holes in the uh, in the retail landscape uh, right now, but. Uh, it's not going to last forever, and uh, you know it, it, there, there is a semblance of uh, of, of um, certainly when you look at uh, at, at law of laws, you can you, you see new magazines on the racks. It's still it's still happening, and the distribution is still still happening, and uh, and they are a great uh, a, a great a great refuge for a printed magazine. I've I've, I've certainly uh, spent a lot of my time reading uh, reading reading from my my backup pile uh, around the house here. Mm. Terrific. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's we'll 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 get back to it. It's it's bizarre. <laughs> Believe me, I've been doing uh, I've been running invoices for for almost twenty years as far as magazines Canada uh, magazines go, and uh, it's it's nerve wracking to not have uh, have 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 sent any magazines out in in the last three weeks. Um, so ho- hoping that changes uh, sooner rather than later, and and you know. We're going to go with what, what, what we have to go with in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, Chris, thank you for speaking with me. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Anytime. And finally, Evan Dixon, Director of Business Development, offers advice on working from home and how that impacts your business continuity planning. So, Evan, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here at home. So- Yeah, at home, right, as we all are. So uh, with COVID-19, working from home is new for a lot of people. Uh, Do you have any advice for managers staying in touch with their staff? Yeah, well, the the first thing I did uh, uh, when uh, the first day everyone was working from home 
Uh, we use uh, like Google for business uh, magazines Canada. Uh, so we have Gmail and we have uh, the Google Hangout kind of chat function. So the first thing I did was I, I created a, a team chat uh, that just uh, looped everyone in together just to kind of replace the experience of sort of shouting across the office. Uh, Magazine Scan has a small enough team that you could sort of uh, raise your voice a little bit if you needed to talk to everybody at once. And uh, uh, I, so I, cr I created that, that uh, a group chat just to allow, give everyone an avenue to, um, to uh, communicate with the whole group very easily uh, and, 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 and duplicate that office experience a little bit. Uh, Another thing I'm big on is a, sort of a weekly or, or some some regular uh, scheduled uh, check-in meeting with my with my director reports. So uh, uh, I I think it's important to carve out time, especially if you don't have the opportunity to uh, just drop by somebody's desk to uh, to to kind of organize your time in such a way that you will definitely be uh, keeping in touch. Uh, regularly, uh, and that gives you a, a a weekly or or maybe every few days or maybe every couple of weeks, whatever works for you, uh, a regular opportunity to uh, to chat, to uh, check in, and to uh, cover whatever whatever you need to cover. You've got you've got that that real estate carved out, and then just uh, call whenever you you feel the need. Uh, my, I get. Uh, Outside of that meeting, I get regular calls from from my coworkers, and I call them whenever we need to chat. There's a lot of uh, a lot of times uh, 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 a quick conversation is is way more efficient than writing an email and waiting for a response. So, uh, you use the phone whenever uh, whenever it's best. It, it's I think it's just useful to have a, a range of tools. You know, uh, a quick text chat, a quick phone call. Uh, uh, email, you know, they're all good for, for different levels of communication and, uh, and they're all useful. So use them all, especially when you can't just physically go, go up to somebody and, and, and ask them a quick question or what have you. Absolutely. And it is a, a big change. Um, so there's so much proliferating online about tips from working from home, but what would you say is most important for magazines to be focused on right now? It's tough for me to speak for magazines specifically because I don't work for a magazine. I work for the magazine association, so it is a bit of a different experience. Um, for myself, uh, uh, I, I find it's very important to uh, organize my time, uh, especially now. This is a, a, this isn't just work from home, right? Uh, I have two kids, so this is work from home and parent from home and, and do everything from home. So it's, uh, this is a really difficult time to... Uh, create a uh, work uh, life separation uh, but it's critical to do so I think my wife and I uh, luckily I have uh, you know a partner who who's who can share uh, child care with uh, responsibility with me so we uh, we right away we scheduled our our week we just kind of worked out uh, our, our weekly, uh, our day-to-day -day routine and identified times where one of us could watch the kids and one of us could work. And we, uh, uh, I communicated those times with my team so that everyone knows when I'm available, when I'm online uh, and, and when I'm at my, at my desk and, uh, and when I'm, I might be slow to respond otherwise. Uh, so if you're lucky enough to uh, to not have kids to uh, to manage during this time, uh, they are a joy. Uh, but uh, if you don't have to worry about that, then of course uh, it's 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 just a question of uh, blocking out um, uh, work time work times for yourself and and creating a routine mm -hmm. uh, so that you don't kind of crawl out of bed and and turn on the TV and and and, and treat it like a weekend. You want to uh, get up, get dressed. Get, I I like to dress kind of for work also uh, i work out of my basement which is chilly so i'm often wearing uh, a blazer uh, while i'm working at home <laughs> uh, in part because it's warmer but also it just makes me it just gets me in that headspace mm. i uh, saw somebody um say that uh, uh wearing a pair of shoes while working from home is uh, a good way to kind of get your mind into a very specific uh kind of work mindset right especially if you don't normally wear shoes at home it's you know uh, a potential tip you know 
I don't normally wear shoes at work, but I see where you're going. <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, creating a routine is is uh, very important, and having certain things that can almost like book end like your your days. Like if you can have something to separate the time, that's certainly helpful. Uh, yeah, exactly. You, you need to be able to mentally comp compartmentalize as well so that then when you're making lunch or when you're in the evening relaxing, then you're also not feeling like, oh, I should be just checking my email one more time. Uh, it's also important for your own mental health to have that separation uh, of personal time as well as uh, separating out your work time. All right. So then what are some tools that you found useful for keeping track or keeping on track while working from home? I found that uh, prioritization is key, especially uh, for me uh, right now, uh, because I'm I'm trying to both uh, parent my kids and also uh, find time to work. I'm sure other people, uh, whether you have kids or other family members living with you or or whatever your home responsibilities are, uh, it, it's important to to be kind to yourself and recognize that this is an extraordinary time, that it's a, a, an extraordinarily difficult time uh, and that uh, you might not be able to operate at full capacity uh, and to recognize that and, and not try and burn yourself out or try and treat it like business as usual. Uh, it's not business as usual. It's, it's a, a strange time to be, to, to be around. Uh, and, and so, with that, uh, if you're if you're able to recognize uh, what you're able to do, then it, it becomes a, a, an exercise in prioritization, really identifying what needs to be at the very top of your to do list, what you need to focus on right away and what you can can uh, uh, kick down the road and what you can let slide. And there might there will for sure be things that you would normally not uh let slip that you may have to and and that's just that's just gonna be the way it is right now yeah absolutely I, i've seen some people saying that you know um it's not that w we are not working from home we are working at home during a pandemic you know which is not like the regular oh yeah i'll, I'll be working from home tomorrow for that one day a week it's it's certainly a big distinction and as you said it's not necessarily business as usual and so um you sometimes need to allow yourself some leeway <laughs> so then uh how do you keep morale up well it helps that i'm incredibly charming uh, <laughs> but uh aside from that uh there there's the, the the team chat that i mentioned before uh that i set up to kind of keep the team in the loop the secondary function of that is uh to enable a bit more casual chit chat. Uh, sharing good news is really uh, important. Uh, uh, we received a new member application uh, this week, which to me is a uh, is amazing uh, that uh, magazines are still uh, thinking about uh, about Magazines Canada and that they're 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 seeing us as uh, as an indispensable resource. Uh, even now, when uh, the natural thing to do might be to kind of uh, uh, look more inward and and, and hunker down. Uh, so that was great news that I immediately uh, uh, shared with their team. Uh, and just fun tidbits. Uh, you mentioned wearing shoes earlier, but uh, I wear fuzzy slippers uh, while I'm working. Uh, so I sent a, a pic of my my fuzzy slippers to to everyone just to see if anyone else was wearing cozy footwear. Looks like I'm the only one, but that's fine. Uh, and, uh, aside from that, on a more serious note, I think it's very important that, uh, we all check in with each other, uh, emotionally, which is something that I think good managers do anyway, but, uh, right now it's, it's absolutely, absolutely critical, uh, to, uh, uh, I usually take time during those, uh, those, um, weekly, uh, meetings I mentioned to, uh, I start off just by saying, how are you feeling? How are you doing? How are you holding up? Uh, and uh, start from there uh, to uh, make sure that um, the people you're working with are 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 hanging in there. Uh, and if they're not, if they are struggling, then uh, try to help them deal with that. Maybe it's uh, uh, 
helping them prioritize uh, uh, so that they can put something down that might be uh, uh, causing them unnecessary stress uh, or maybe it's uh, giving them uh, space in some other way or maybe it's just having a talk uh, so that they feel a little bit less alone right now. Uh, that's uh, that's also very important because uh, it, it's important that, that people understand that we're we're all in this together, even though we're physically apart. Uh, very well said. So what have been some unexpected highlights of working from home? I'd say the number one is uh, that I don't have to commute. So that adds like an hour and a half to my day that I can spend making dinner, uh, do, you know, doing other things. Uh, uh, so that's that's pretty nice to, to have that, that extra time that I'm not in the car. Um, Otherwise, uh, I I keep mentioning my kids, and that's a huge uh, a huge highlight uh, of this experience is having so much more time uh, to spend with my my two kids. Normally, uh, on a weekday, uh, I would get them up, get them dressed, feed them breakfast, and take them to daycare, and that's maybe an hour, two hours of of time, and then another three hour window after work. Uh, before bedtime, so that's not a lot of time on a on a daily basis uh, to to be a parent. So yeah, it is really pleasant to uh, to be able to take a lot more time uh, with the children. Yeah, I, I can imagine it's uh, like you said. There are you know some struggles in a certain way, and it can impact the the timing of things right now. But to have all of that extra time is is certainly great, and you know it's uh, that's nice to hear. So what's something that you're doing to stay positive during this time? I try to get outside as much as I can. Uh, there, there's a pretty nice park near my near my house, uh, but uh, we, I just go for walks. And on the weekend, uh, uh, my wife and I will, uh, uh, regardless of the weather or what else is going on, we'll, we try to ar- arrange an outing. We'll, we'll hop in a car, in, in the car, and, and, and go for drive-through or just just look around somewhere or, or just something to break up the day. So it doesn't feel like another weekday, but we're not working or not working as much. Uh, we go out and to be honest, these, these drives are not thrilling. They're just, they're relatively mediocre experiences because you're just, you're just going somewhere. But when we get back, uh, the rest of the day and the rest of the weekend, just, uh, it, it feels uh, like we've accomplished something, like we've done something, we've broken up our time a little bit, uh, and it's not, uh, it doesn't, it, it feels like a, a, just a change of pace. Uh, it's not such a slog uh, from day to day. So uh, that's another thing that, uh, that I found really valuable. That's great. Yeah, it's uh, it's really important to to get outside, you know, like you can you can still do that so long as you remain, you know, properly socially distanced from others. So uh, it's yeah, yeah exactly. Important we're to... definitely we're maintaining social distancing for yeah. sure. Uh, we're lucky that we, we live in a, a, a not too dense an area uh, of the city. So it's not too difficult for us to get out without uh, without running into a lot of people. Yeah, terrific. All right. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me, Evan. This was great. And I'm sure people will find this, you know, super useful. And just hearing from uh, all of the magazines, Canada staff is is uh, great because, you know, so many different aspects and uh, great tips about working from home and, and what to do during this time. Thanks, Michael. I hope, uh, I hope it's useful. Thanks for listening. And thank you again to Melanie, Brianne, Chris and Evan for joining us today. Please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review Audio Mag on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow Magazines Canada on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Mags Canada, and on LinkedIn as Magazines Canada for more magazine news and resources. Audio Mag is a Magazines Canada podcast produced by Messenger Bag Media. We recognize the funding of the Canadian Department of Heritage through the Canada Periodical Fund.